This may be the single greatest New Music Friday in history. Pusha T, ASAP Rocky, both put out their way too long awaited albums, Testing and Daytona. By God, I am excited. It's like 2.30 right now. I've had work all day, so I haven't had any time to listen to them, but the rest of the day I'm zoning out and it, it's officially Push a ton season, baby. My first page that that was in 1998. Hey. I'm on. I was trapping since a young nigga, by the way. Back, way back then, boy, I was a different dude. Working my way down ASAP's album. Big fan so far. Pusha T's album is out of control. And if you want to go to the store and buy a fuckload of baking soda. Pusha T dissed Drake. And then Drake came back with a diss song last night, which is actually fucking epic. I'm surprised because Pusha's dissed Drake like a bunch of times over the last few years. Drake's never responded because he would get fucking murdered in a rap battle with Push. But Drake did the damn thing, and I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what Pusha T comes back with. Just about to get ready to head out for Memorial Day weekend. We're going into Brooklyn for brunch. About to get shooklin. I'm sorry, I won't say shit like that ever again. So yeah, we're doing brunch, and then we're going to go out. I don't know if we're staying in Brooklyn, or we're going to head back to Manhattan. But I feel like this is going to turn into a fucking 72-hour bender. Semi-excited. But also not excited at all. If I know I have work to do, i finished actually most of my, I've been up for the last like three hours, 9 a.m. right now. If I have anything left, like if I go out for the weekend, for the holiday weekend or something, and I know I'm just gonna be like completely out of it the whole time. If I have like anything that I didn't get done work-wise, it makes me like anxious in the back of my head. So I have to make sure I get everything done. Otherwise I'm gonna like not be able to enjoy myself this weekend. But I think I'm at a good spot right now. So most of the work is done. Doing some laundry, gonna hit the gym before I head out. Maybe hit Marshalls to do a little short sleeve button down, season shopping. And I'm just gonna jam out until then. So I was just thinking about something. You know, the deeper I get into marketing, the more I realize that marketing and dating, I guess you could say, getting with girls and guys, if that's what you're into, significant others, just, yeah, dating in general. Marketing and dating are almost identical to a T. And here's what I mean by that. If you think about marketing, right? And I've talked about this on my channel before. Marketing is a funnel. And think of a funnel, the shape of it, right? On the top, you have your cold audience. So what a cold audience means is that they don't know. It's the entire pool of anyone, right? Anyone that's possibly interested in buying a product or a service. It's the cold audience. They know nothing about your brand, your product, or your service yet, right? They know nothing, so they're cold. Once they get introduced to your product or service or brand, whether it's through an Instagram ad or an email or you know just a video they saw, then they become familiar with it and they work their way down the funnel and they become a warm audience. Consumers are, are, are getting better and better at knowing when you're trying to sell them something, right? It is very hard to just go straight to a cold audience and sell something. You have to build a relationship, a connection between yourself and the consumer before they wanna buy a product or a service or whatever it is you want, right? Whatever it is the ultimate goal is for you. Now, the reason I say that this is so similar to dating, and you think about what you're trying to sell, right? When you're dating, you're pretty much marketing yourself as a person. And when you're marketing a product, right, the higher the, the price of the product is, the longer the funnel needs to be, the more built up a relationship needs to be between you and the consumer. When you think of dating, right? You have to think of all these little steps in between the relationship that could be almost priced, right? You have like getting the person's number, you have going out on a date, you have being their girlfriend or boyfriend. Being a girlfriend or boyfriend is a lot higher priced of a product than getting their number. Like what are the chances that you see a Facebook ad for a car? Someone's trying to sell you a $10,000 car and boom, you're sold. Like you just, you buy it off that. Never gonna happen. The same way that you would never walk up to a girl and be like, do you wanna be my girlfriend? never gonna happen. So when you think about it, you're marketing yourself as a person, right? And when you're starting a branding campaign, right? Branding means getting the message or the awareness out about, about who you are, what your company does without the intention of selling. And that should be like the sign of a relationship as well. You shouldn't go into it being like, I wanna be your boyfriend. Usually the first you know, piece of branding would start with like a video. It doesn't matter how long it is, but the ultimate, you know, the pieces of the video should consist of an introduction, who you are, what you stand for, 
and then some kind of value, right? Whether it's entertainment, information, motivation, it's the same thing with, with talking to people and starting a relationship with anyone, whether it be a friend or a girlfriend or whatever. But you have that initial conversation. The first time you talk to someone new, it's the same exact way. And at the end, you know, in terms of marketing, you'll usually have a call to action, whether that's sign up for my email list, buy my product, download this. Give me some sort of information about you, right? And a lot of the time when you do that initial video, right, your branding campaign, you won't even have a call to action because your intent is not on selling. And that's the same thing with having that initial conversation, right? You should go into any kind of conversation thinking of it from like a friend's perspective. And you're never gonna date someone in the long term that you can't be really, really close with as a friend first. So when you have that initial conversation, you get a feel for you know what you're getting yourself into, what might you be buying in the future, right? And that's exactly what marketing, it's exactly what dating is when it comes down to it. And the other funny thing that I, that I see similar between the two is the phrases being a good salesman and spitting game. Two things that I think are complete myths. I don't I don't think anyone is good at selling. I don't think anyone is, has game. I think both of them are exactly the same thing and I think it comes down to believing in what you're actually selling and what you're putting out there and the value that you provide. No one's coming up to me and selling me some bullshit product that they don't believe in because you could sniff that out from a mile away. And the same thing with spitting game. I 100% like I, I understand why you would refer to some conversations as spitting game and others as just regular conversation. But when it comes down to it, whenever you're talking to someone, that's all it is, it's just a conversation. If you have good connection, good chemistry, that's what you would think of as spitting game. And I think that also comes down to believing what you're selling, right? As I said before, you're selling yourself pretty much. You're marketing yourself. So if you're comfortable with yourself, you're comfortable with who you are, then you should have no problem conversing with someone else, wanting to learn about who they are and you can give off who you are. So you don't feel like uncomfortable doing it in that sense. You know what I mean? Because if you're comfortable with yourself, then I guess you could say you're good at spitting game. That's the same thing with marketing. If you know your product, if you believe in what you're selling, it's not hard to sell it because people can see the like gen genuity, gen yeah, genuity behind behind what you're selling. There's a reason you have passion behind. That's why like, if I'm out, right, and I'm, I'm, I'm like hitting on a girl or something, or if it's someone I wanna talk to, and they don't really give me the time of day, I'm like, okay, you're fucking lost, because I know what I bring to the table, right? And you should be the same way. You should know what you have to offer, and if someone doesn't see that in you, that says more about them than you. I promise you that. And it's the same thing with the product, brand, or service. And then you look at touching you or her body language or something like that. It's the same thing as someone clicking on your ad. It's the same thing as someone commenting on one of your videos. It's all these cues. They're telling you that they're engaging with you. You just have to be able to realize it. And I get it because, you know, it's comf being in the friend zone is comfortable. So what happens if you step out? What happens if you try to sell and then they turn it down? Then one, your product, you or your actual product, just kind of took a, a, a reputation slam a little bit. Now you're doubting yourself a little bit and it's gonna hurt you the next time around. But that just means you need to know, know what you're offering better. When you know your ideal client, when you know who you're targeting, who you're going after, who you wanna be friends with, it's not easy to sell them on anything because you're not actually selling them. They already, they're in the market for what you're offering, right? You don't have to do anything extra to get there. And I don't wanna sound like a, like an asshole here, but think about <clears throat> diversifying your customer portfolio. And I don't mean dating multiple girls at once, but I mean where you meet them. When you think about marketing, you don't wanna have all your eggs in one basket. You don't want to only have an audience on one platform, right? You don't want to rely only on YouTube. You don't wanna rely only on Instagram. You don't wanna rely only on email or just your website because you never know. One day, what happens if Facebook disappears and your whole business came through there. Boom. 
That's why this, this last few months I've been working so hard on building up my other platforms and audiences, me personally, for my fantasy football stuff. Now I have about a thousand person email list. I have a four figure uh, Twitter following. I'm over like 53 or 5,400 YouTube subscribers. Facebook's something I'm gonna be pushing in, in, in the near future too. So you have to diversify. And by that, I mean like where you're meeting people, right? You have to be open to new suggestions. And same thing with marketing. Whenever you're getting into a marketing service, you have to look at where, like, think about like three years ago, Instagram was not a thing, now it's the biggest thing. In three years from now, Twitter might not be a thing anymore and something else will come and take its place. When you think about dating wise, you have to keep your eyes open. Like, you can't just think you're gonna meet your significant other at a bar. What happens if something happens and you can't drink anymore and you can't go out anymore? What happens if you have a lifestyle change? What happens if this platform becomes the best marketing platform and you have to move? So you think of Instagram as the bar, you think of, Twitter as the library, you think of Snapchat as the gym, you know what I mean? It's all these different places that you find potential customers and you have to, you always have to be receptive to that and open to change. So your business plan can't be one fold. And on that, like the most important thing when you're doing content for these different platforms is understanding the context of the, of the platforms that you're putting the content out to. So you can't, you can't make one video and then put it out to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, because they're all used so differently, you know? And that's so important. You can't do the same shit on Snapchat that you would do on Facebook. That's why different guys like DJ Khaled blew up on Snapchat because he's doing funny little bits and, and just being a ridiculous person. But had he just started putting those videos on Facebook, people would be like, what's wrong with him? It's the same way you can't hit on people at the bar the same way you hit on people at the gym. They all take different approach, they all take different context in order to be successful at it. And to that point, you think of collecting an email address, right? I mean, it's not gigantic in terms of marketing, like it's not gonna give you incredible revenue, but equate email address with a phone number, same thing, right? You collected a lead, completely comparative. I'm not, I don't mean to degrade women or human in general, but you collect the email address, you collect the lead, right? From there, they're basically giving giving you a chance to offer them value in their life. So boom, you get the email address, what's the next thing you do? You send them an email with, hey, here's my new podcast episode, check it out. They'll listen, and if they like the value that you gave them, they are a fan of you, a subscriber. You can get deeper into the relationship. Same thing with the email address, I mean, the, the like a, a phone number, right? You can call them, you can text them, you could ask them out on a date. You go out on a date, you provide value. However you are as a person, what can you offer them? Are you entertaining? Are you funny? Are you genuine, kind, considerate? You know, all of these things. It, it, it's the same, same, same thing. And you work them down the, again, I don't mean to make it sound like you're working someone and down a funnel, but the comparisons are just. I'm about to hop on a podcast actually with one of the, one of the speakers my mentor brought into the kind of mastermind house that I was out in LA for. So he reached out to me afterwards, Dustin, Got lean l-i-e-n so he has his podcast he uh, is a marketing consultant runs his own business and things like that so he reached out to me and said hey i'm, I'm uh, from my next podcast episode i want to interview one or two people from inside the house i'd love to have you on to the show to talk about it it's your experience i'm not actually really sure what we're going to be talking about but i was like yeah absolutely of course absolutely he's a really cool guy really really smart really helpful gave off a lot of valuable content so there's no way i wasn't you know going to help him out after he helped me out so 6 43 i'm hopping on the podcast at 6 45 uh, we're going to do a zoom call it's going to be video he's just gonna record the audio for it but um it's like taking it out back i don't know why we'll see so i'm excited to hop on this and i'll uh, follow up with you guys after e-commerce clients for the most part uh, that's kind of the niche that i've gone down um and i kind of i guess work as a marketing consultant overall for their business as well um out of school i was uh, i was like a business major a lot of people i guess in my situation wasn't exactly sure what i wanted to do i always knew i had uh, kind of this creative fuel behind me and an entrepreneurial spirit i just wasn't sure what I what I brought or what uh, what I brought to the table that I could you know monetize and really make a, a living off of it. It's something I've I've just enjoyed doing and I've had a passion for since I was I don't know like 12 or 13 with my friends. We've always played. Uh, I started a blog like four or five years ago. I started blogging for a few random websites and then eventually started my own blog, my own YouTube channel. And I saw a big kind of gap in the market because there aren't a lot of people on YouTube. 
uh, doing this. This is a this is a tough question because I, I wasn't sure how deep I wanted to get here, but I, I think I think we're gonna get in the fields a little bit. So I, I think it would go to uh, you know since then I made like a concerted effort to do so, and I've noticed my life. You know this is not just pertaining to to business, but this is every aspect of your life because when you could take them and from there that's when you really that's when life begins i think so i warned you Easy money. It's about to be a surgical summer. Chop the tops off the coops. The cuatro ciento ochenta y ocho. The spider joint. And you know we gotta cut the heads off these snakes, right? Watch the body drop. Drug dealing aside, goose right in the side. Let's have a heart to heart about your pride. Even though you're multi, I see that your soul don't look alive. The M's count different when baby divides the pie. Wait, let's examine why. Your music for the past few years been angry and full of lies. I started at the home front, I'm on one. Dennis Graham, stay off the gram, bitch, I'm on one. You mentioned wedding ring like it's a bad thing. Your father walked away at five, hell of a dad thing. Marriage is something that Sandy never had. Drake, how you a winner, but she keep coming in last place. Monkey suit, Dennis, you parade him. A Steve Harvey suit, nigga made him. Confused, always felt you weren't black enough. Afraid to grow it, cause your fro wouldn't nap enough. Since you name dropped my fiance, let him know who you chose as your Beyonce. Sophie knows better as your baby mother. Cleaned her up for IG, but the stench is on her. A baby's involved, it's deeper than rap. We talking character, let me keep with the facts. You are hiding a child, let that boy come home. Deadbeat motherfucker playing Border Patrol. Ooh, Adonis is your son, and he deserves more than an Adidas press run. That's real. Love that baby, respect that girl, forget she's a porn star, let her be your world, yeah. How dare you put yay in my verses, I'm selfish, I want all of the curses, I'm pre-booking the churches, me versus, three hearses, if we all go to hell it'll be worth it, already aligned with the greats, and on that same note, the only ones I chase are two ghosts, still giving you classics, that's the only thing that dates me, over your 40, hunched over like he 80. Tick, tick, tick How much time he got that man is Six, six, six I got the devil flow, nigga Six, six, six Surgical summer with it Snip, snip, snip And you don't really want it with him Surgical summer volume one We gon' take this slow We just gon' peel it back layer by layer Yeah Daytona Album of the motherfucking year you talking about you upset <laughs> Well I wanna see what it's like when you get angry Okay You show me that Push Chop the tops off the coops The spider joint You know we gotta cut the heads off these snakes, right? Let's have a heart to heart about your pride. Even though you're multi, I see 80. Tick, tick, tick. How much time he got that man in? Six, six, six. I got the devil flow, nigga. Six, six, six. Bro! I am so happy. The beginning of this vlog, I was talking about Pusha T dropping his album. Daytona is amazing, by the way. So highly recommend you check that shit out. He disses Drake on the album. Drake shoots back with the Duppy freestyle, which was surprisingly pretty good. I'm team Pusha way, way, way before any of this beef happened. He is like my top three favorite rappers. And then Push just violated Drake's entire soul, heart, family, body. Anything that makes a human being a human being, Drake just got taken away from. Woo! 
The Adenon freestyle by Pusha was incredible. Drake's just getting murdered. Drake put an IG story up last night trying to explain the blackface picture, man. As soon as you as soon as you need to start making explanations for the shit that he rapped about, you holding that L. I'm so happy, man. I listened to Pusha's freestyle like 30 times in a row at the gym yesterday. Right now we're just cooking up some spinach, eggs. My new favorite snack is dipping celery sticks into a shitload of salsa and I throw some extra onions in there. It's like fucking 12 calories for a lot of food. Draft day weekend, bro. We just booked the Airbnb. This is sick. Let me show you what it looked like. For those of y'all that are new to the channel or haven't seen the videos where I'm doing this, I'm basically taking nine of my subscribers. We got an Airbnb in New York City. Officially, we just got it. Bringing them out Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we're gonna have our uh, a fantasy football draft during the weekend, but we're gonna be going out and, and just chilling and having a good time. So this is, I hope that uh, focuses in on it. This is the Airbnb we got. It's like a penthouse in Manhattan in Hell's Kitchen. Sleeps 10 people. Look how nice this place is. They got a air hockey, a pool table. Man. The next step in this process is to narrow down the people. So we had interest of about, I think it was like 18 to 20 people. Can only have nine other people in the league. The place only sleeps 10 people. Did that cost about 2,800, between 2,800 and 3,000 for the weekend, Friday, Friday night, Saturday night. But again, this is a high ticket price product for people that are joining me. So everything that they put into the money is gonna be pushed towards the shelter, it's gonna be pushed towards going out, stock, it's all inclusive basically this weekend. Food, drinks, shelter, entertainment, all that kind of stuff. So it's gonna be a dope weekend. So that was the first part of the process. Now I need to narrow down to nine people who are coming with me. We're gonna be coming out and they're from all over the country, which is very cool. California, someone from Canada. So it's all over the continent, I guess, if you wanna get technical. So things are looking up, it's a good day. I'm about to just put in work on the draft guide right now. So I have the draft guide dropping. July 8th or July 9th is the date that I'm shooting for to release the first issue. And we have about 70, 70 to 75 pre-orders already on it, which is incredible. It's not even June, tomorrow is the first day of June. So that is awesome. Thank you to anyone who purchased and watches this. You know what's crazy about spinach? Like when you cook it on there, it just gets stripped. Like that was a huge handful of spinach. I'll give you a little update on what I'm working on. How I'm preparing for this draft weekend. And uh, listen, the reason I think I'm gonna pull this off is because I'm, I'm being very calculated on how I'm doing it. There's so much more work that goes into something like this because when people are willing to pay you this amount of money, you really have to have your shit together. Plan things as best as you possibly can and really prepare for this thing. So pretty much what I've been doing is putting together a sheet, like an Excel sheet of everyone that's hit me up with an email and, and telling me that they're interested. You can see here, I'm just getting the basics, the, in, the information about them as, as people, their emails, their social age, gender, all these kind of things to help me keep organized. And then I've been planning on like looking at expenses and things like the prices that I'm gonna be paying for different things throughout the weekend. So on the list, we have obviously the Airbnb, then we have food. If we're gonna go out to restaurants, we're gonna obviously have snacks and food at the Airbnb. Like you gotta remember, it's throughout the whole weekend. I don't catering for when we do the draft. I wanna have alcohol, so like a bar within the Airbnb that's pretty much stocked the entire time. If we go out to restaurants and stuff, making sure that they can drink. Ubers, so around the city, if we go out to restaurants, if we go out to bars, if we go sightseeing or whatever. So a lot of these people, like, and I'm trying to make this so, since these people are coming from all over the place, right? All over the country. A lot of them, I don't know. I don't know if they've been to New York City before. I don't know if they'll ever come back to New York City again. So I don't wanna be like their babysitter for the weekend, right? If they wanna see Times Square, if they wanna see the Empire State Building, if they wanna go to, I don't know, wherever they wanna go, I'm not gonna be like, no, you can't do that. So I just wanna make this as like enjoyable for them as possible. And we have all, you know, all these different things planned then cleaning supplies for the house. I wanna do like a gift basket for them. That's stuff I'm still working on. I don't wanna ruin the surprise for them in case any of them are watching my videos and stuff, but a lot of preparation goes into the back and then I'm planning the itinerary in terms of breaking down times when we're gonna arrive, we have to leave. And that's another thing with the Airbnb, you obviously have to be out by like 11 a.m. that last day. So I'm trying to like figure out when, originally I wanted to end the weekend with the draft, right? Because you know that's a good way to close the entire weekend. But if we have to be out by 11 a.m., I'm not gonna ask everybody to wake up at 8 a.m. so that we could do the draft. That way, like, we're not gonna be able to, like, cater food and have it done right. So I'm thinking, move the draft to Saturday and then go out Saturday and then leave Sunday. But, like, I don't know. I just, it, there's just a lot of preparation that goes into this stuff. And I wanna make sure I'm doing it right. So I'm working on that. And then when it comes to, like, posting social content, this is another thing that you have to be super calculated about and have intention is everything when it comes to action and when it comes to getting things done in an organized manner. So, right now, like, in terms of just fantasy football, right? I have my marketing work that I don't really 
get too into on this channel, but for fantasy football, when you're building a brand, when you're trying to build a social following, you have to be very meticulous with it. So what I've been trying to do is have a schedule down packed exactly what I'm doing throughout the week and when things are gonna come out, excuse me. So. I think my YouTube schedule for the next couple months throughout the summer is gonna be video Monday, Wednesday, Friday, live stream on Sunday. In terms of Instagram, I'm posting seven days a week and I have it broken down like literally to an Excel chart here where it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Since Instagram posts can only be 2000 uh, characters, I have it set up so that it's like a word count over here, counting exactly how many words are going into it. So it's all like calculated to a T. So, you know, once you start breaking things down to a system, things become a lot easier. Like the upfront setup is always gonna be a little bit difficult and it's gonna take some time and get, you know, just getting into that stuff. But once you have a down pack, once you have a system, once you have a routine, things get easier and easier and they become better and you can start focusing on other parts of the business or other parts of the content so that they become higher quality. So that's Instagram, that's that. The Twitter following, we're at like, I think 1200 followers on Twitter. We hit 5,500 subscribers on YouTube. Instagram, I started Instagram just like a month or two ago. We're up to like 350 followers. So it's slowly creeping. I expect that to keep shooting up throughout the summer. What else we got? What else we got? Pre-orders. I think I already talked about the draft guide. We have like 75 of them. There's a lot of things in the work. I just like showing the behind the scenes because I think a lot of people have the mindset or, you know, they lack the knowledge of knowing that a lot of this stuff, people who are really successful when it comes to creating content and paving their own path, have so much intention behind what they do. And it's not just like lucky, it's not just like, oh, it's a scrambled mess all the time. You have to stay focused and you have to know what you're doing. What am I doing all day? There is a lot that goes on behind the scenes just to make, sh just to make it look to you guys that everything is organized. And then, you know, I obviously have to, this is, it's Thursday night, so I'm gonna end the vlog here pretty much, but I have to edit all the film that I'm shooting right now and the past prior week tomorrow, Friday, and get it up for Saturday as well as have a video for Friday for Fantasy Dan. So shit's like, you know, a lot of stuff going on. But tomorrow's June 1st, so we'll get into June. I'm gonna talk about my goals for the month of June in the next video. My goal to start off June is to fucking zominate National Donut Day. I got this shit down to a T. There's like six places around me that are giving out free donuts, so I'm gonna absolutely murder tomorrow. I think I might just fast for the rest of the day and go in on donuts tomorrow. I haven't had a donut in a minute. I haven't been eating them since I've been eating. I'm not even doing keto anymore because keto is like kind of insane. It's too hard for me to go like 25 grams of carbs, but it's like a super low, low carb diet, I guess you could say. But I, I've been enjoying eating a lot of, a lot of fatty ass beef and steak and beans. And I'm not eating beans actually. I don't know why that came up. And then I guess I could show you the draft guide that I'm working on too. Probably put in like three or four hours on it today. So this is the software I use to make the e-magazine. It's called Flip Snack. And what I do is basically like you can do the work inside the actual magazine software. It looks like when people are flipping through and whatever. Actually, this is what it looks like. So I don't really, it's just like a skeleton right now because I'm working on basically within Canva. Canva is a really good resource for anyone that is like in design work and you need to create social media designs, it's all free. They have all templates and stuff for you to use. So pretty much I make the images in here and then I save them as like images and then I just upload them into the, the Flip Snack magazine software. So that's kind of how I'm doing it now, but that's kind of what I got working on this week and uh, nothing else really. I'm getting on a call with my mentor tomorrow, tomorrow morning, we're gonna go over some things and uh, that's gonna wrap it up, I think so. If you enjoyed the vlog, as always, leave that thumbs up. Please, you can leave a comment down below if you want to talk that talk. Subscribe if you are new to the channel, and I'll see y'all next Saturday for the next vlog, week 60. Fo. Still giving you classics. That's the only thing that dates me. Over your 40, hunched over like he 80. Tick, tick, tick. How much time he got that man is? Six, six, six. I got the devil flow, nigga. Six, six, six. Surgical summer with it. Snip, snip, snip. And you don't really want it with him.